Good day, brothers and sisters. Today's Mass intentions are as follows for Odessa for healing, for Annabelle, Annabella, her birthday, celebrating her birthday, I think her 15th birthday, I believe. Dawn for birthday blessings, Oren Mondays, celebrating, Monet's, sorry, for birthday blessings as well. Ingrid and Nick Achong for healing, for Nigel Cassie for healing, and for the repose of the souls of Father Jervé Jairo, Michael John and Michael and John McKay, Roger Fafan, Sandra Williams, Annette Lashley, Richard Boyack, and for Sarah's son. <laughs> Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Gather to celebrate to give thanks to our God. Recognize His love, His mercy, and compassion, each and one of us. We stand in His holy presence. Let's bring our hearts before God, especially in this holy week we come to repent and ask for our sins. Let's look deep within our hearts, our souls, and ask our God for His mercy and His forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have paid to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me, the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passover. And as we merit to receive your pardon. So, Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Islands, listen to me. Pay attention, remotest peoples. 
the Lord called me before I was born. From my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I have toiled in vain. I have exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while my cause was with the Lord, my reward with my God. I was honored in the eyes of the Lord. My God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken. He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. The response. My lips will tell of your help. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, pay heed to me and save me. My lips will tell of your help. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. My lips will tell of your help. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth, from my mother's womb, you have been my help. My lips will tell of your help. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your help. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth and I proclaim your wonders still. My lips will tell of your help. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father, you were led to your crucifixion as a meek lamb is led to the slaughter. Glory and praise to you. While at supper with his disciples, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, I tell you most solemnly, one of you will betray me. This disciple looked at, looked, looked at me one another, wondering what he meant. Disciple Jesus loved was reclining next on Jesus, was next to Jesus. Simon Peter signed to him and said, Ask what it is meant. So leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said, Who is it, Lord? It is one, replied Jesus, the one whom I give the piece of bread that I shall dip into the dish. He dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. At that instant, after Judas had taken the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus then said, what you are going to do, do it quickly. Now 
One of the others at the table understood the reason he said this. Since Judas had charge of the common fund, some of them thought Jesus was telling him, buy what you need for the festival, or telling him to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the piece of bread, he went out, night had fallen. When he had gone, Jesus said, now has the Son of Man be glorified, and in him God has been glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself. I will glorify him very soon. My little children, I shall not be with you much longer. You will look for me, and I told the Jews where I'm going. You cannot come. Simon, Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. You will follow me later. Peter said to him, why can I not follow you now? I'll lay down my life for you. Lay down your life for me, answered Jesus. I tell you most solemnly, before the cock crows, you'll disown me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Our first reading from Prophet Isaiah can remind us of who we are. Who we are created the image and likeness of God. He said, you formed me my mother's womb, you pronounced my name, you gave me a mission, you called me to do your will. Yes, all of us have been called to do God's will. Just as Isaiah was called to proclaim the coming of the Lord, and proclaim all the things he did, we too are called to proclaim our Lord in our lives, to live that life according to our God, or he calls us to live peace, harmony, justice, integrity, compassion, unity, all the wonderful things. So Isaiah's call is my call, our call. He calls us into his relationship with him. Because he formed us together. As Psalm 137 says, I formed you together in mother's womb. I call you what wonder of my being. Yes, so we have to look at ourselves as God's creation, God's work of art, created the last heaven, the king of God. But at the same time, we have to recognize God calls us into obedience, to do his will. To fulfill his mission, he calls each and one of us into the stem of Lent. We're praying now for Holy Week. You know, Holy Week, in fact, preparing to celebrate our Easter Tridium. So we have made our journey. This week is the holiest week of our church's liturgical calendar. So you look deep in our hearts and see, what am I doing? Am I really being that witness? Am I being that person on mission through my life, bringing the presence of God to all that we meet? Yes, we have to look at ourselves in this time of the Holy Week, kind of have a deep reflection, see, what is going on in my life? How am I serving God? Am I recognizing my call as God called Isaiah, as God called all the prophets, I called Jeremiah, the prophets? God has called me, you, all of us, proclaim his message. Are we doing that? Are we giving, as it were, a lip service to our God and just doing what we have to do, not doing the extra? Because God wants from us the extra. That's what he wants from us, the extra. In this Holy Week, Let's see what extra we could give to our God, which we didn't give over the last couple of weeks. Let's see how we can be kind of make up in this time, in this holy week, because God is calling us in a relationship with him. Be, be full of honesty, integrity, justice, to do his will. Our gospel today gives us the slight opposite of the call of Jeremiah. We see two figures emerging from our gospel today, Judas and Simon Peter. Judas was the one who said we betrayed Jesus. Judas had a plan. He went and contrived with the Sanhedrin, the leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, to betray Jesus. And there he was among Jesus, with one of them, one of the tough apostles. He had a good position. He, had a, in, he was in charge of the common fund. Even when Jesus told him to go and do what you have to do, people thought, well, he's going to give money to the poor, buy food for the festival, because he had control over the common fund of what disciples had. Because what the disciples had, they brought it together and put it a common fund. So Judas had a good position. He was respected. But in the midst of all of that, hypocrisy, the deceit, the planning, the corruption was in the depth of his heart. In the midst of all of that, Jesus loved Judas. Jesus did not reject Judas. Jesus loved Judas. Jesus loves the sinner today. He loves the sinner in each and every one of us. He loves us that way. But he calls us to repentance. As that gospel said, Jesus gave Judas the bit of bread. That's a sign of honor. Honor at a meal. The master of the, of the table takes a bit of bread, dips it in the sauce, and gives it to someone. That's a show of friendship, 
fraternal of friendship, of the, the table, table manners, he gave it to Judas. He did all he had to do. In the midst of all of that, Judas betrayed him. As the gospel said so beautifully, after Jesus had given Judas the bread, he took it, see it ended him, and night fell. It became dark. The sin of Judas came over the people. Night fell. Darkness came. The sin of Judas was there. To overcome them. But Jesus still loved Judas in his sin. Jesus loves us in our sin. But you can't take that for granted. We will be punished for our sins, but you have to repent of our sins, as Peter in our gospel did today. Peter said, Lord, I'll die for you. I would go with you. I'll go to Jerusalem to die with you. I'll do all these things for you. And then when it comes, the crux, Peter denied Jesus. He denied Jesus, but Jesus forgave him. When Peter denied Jesus, we read later on a passion narrative, the week to come, he went out and wept. Wept bitterly because he realized he had betrayed his Jesus. He betrayed his Jesus and now he's weeping bitterly because Jesus told him, for the cock crows twice, you disown me three times. Simon Peter didn't forget what would happen. It happened. In his own human weakness, he sinned. But he recognized his sin and went back to Jesus. He wept. He wept bitterly and betrayed his Jesus. Do we, in our own lives, weep bitterly when you have betrayed our Jesus in some way or the other? We betrayed another person by divulging the confidence they're given to you or saying something behind their back or criticizing someone, criticizing people in our church one after the other. Do we really weep when we do those things? Our hearts open to really experience God's mercy. Judas did not open his heart to receive God's mercy. He went off, we know his story. Simon Peter wept bitterly. He recognized his sin. He went back to Jesus. He was forgiven. We too need to weep over our sins. We need to come back to Jesus. You know, the world today said, that's not such a bad sin. You know, that's not such, not such a sin. Everything is coming, not a sin today. So you wonder, what is sin today? We have to have a consciousness of what is sin in our own lives so we could weep over them, literally, and come back to Jesus, who will forgive us, who loves us in our sinfulness and forgives us in our sinfulness. This is our Jesus, who we know. It's the Jesus, the Lord, that Isaiah came to know. This is Jesus we have all come to know through our baptism, our confirmation. This is Jesus we know. Are we really knowing this Jesus? Are we really loving this Jesus? Are we really understanding this Jesus who he is for us? Let us today, as you go to this Holy Week, reflect a little deeper on my life, our lives, as a son and daughter of God, called by God, created by God, named by God for his purpose. Are we doing God's will? Are we proclaiming the presence of God in our lives today? Are we just going through the motions, doing lip service? That is, we figure, is just enough for us to do. No, God wants more. God gave everything for us. He gave his blood and water for us. As he hung upon the cross, blood and water flowed from his side, giving his life. Blood is life. Water is life for us. When you go to look for a planet in any part of the world, look first thing, look to see if there's any water on that planet. Water is life. Blood and water is life for us. Jesus gave it all for us. Let us today recognize what my God, Jesus, did for me. What he did for each and one of us. How he loves us. Let us love him. Back return all our hearts, minds, and souls to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. Amen. It's time to bring out the session before God. God, we bring our lives before you. All those here in our chapel will join us in this broadcast, wherever they are. We bring our lives before you today. We pray, Lord, that we, our hearts will be open to you to receive your word. Be transformed by you. Recognize you as Lord and God. In our weakness, Lord, let us come back to you. Let's recognize your God who forgives us. Even though he loves us, let's not take that love for granted. People do all that we do. So, Lord, we pray for hearts of compassion, love, and mercy, each and one of us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. 
We pray for a world in need of a healing presence at this time. We pray for all nations, as so well we know, the war and strife, the difficulties. We pray for peace, unity among all peoples of our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Before we need Lord, you ask a blessing of peace upon our land. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. All the needs of all those gathered here in this chapel, all those who join us in broadcast, each one of us has a need. Let's bring these before God at this time and ask him to hear an answer each one of our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, we bring to you all our intentions of our Mass today, those with special intentions, those who have died to pray for their souls, those who celebrate birthdays, or those with special needs brought to our Mass today, offer them to you and say, Lord, fight for them, you them to be with you in the eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, we bring all our petitions before you, in hope and faith and knowledge that you hear and answer them, to ask Mary, our Mother, to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now and at the hour of our death. As we make all these prayers to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come to you. Bearing gifts of bread and wine, recalling how, Lord, you gave your gift of love divine before your table. Right now we stand. Oh, please, Lord, accept. This present from our hands. Take these our gifts, Lord. Sanctify them, make them thine. Pronounce the words, Lord, that make your flesh and blood of bread and wine. Then a two. My brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of His name, all the Lord is foolish. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those who make the partakers of these sacred gifts, and grant a share in their fullness to Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's right and just a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. O Holy Father, my eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time by renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this past in the world, and so to hold rather the things that eternally endure. And so, with angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord, of You indeed hold your Lord the font of all holiness. You holy therefore these gifts we pray. By sending down the spirit upon them let the Jew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time is betrayed and willingly in his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave me thanks, he said a blessing, gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. But this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which I put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, memory of me. The mystery of faith. When you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, in celebrating the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and a chalice of salvation. Given thanks, you held us worthy to be present and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, gather together into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread out the world with fullness of charity together, Francis the Pope, Jesus the Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in hope and resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Bless the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse. Bless the apostles and all the saints. Of pleasures you throughout the ages, we married be who is eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, God, your mighty Father, Unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. To save this command the form my divine teacher, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy be always, free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called the Supper of the Lamb.
The table of the Lord is laden with all that you and I need for our journey. He invites all who hunger and thirst to his table of plenty. And even though you cannot be physically here, still come and receive from our Lord in a spiritual way. Let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O Divine Savior, O Jesus, O Blessed Sacrament. Jesus, Thou art coming, holy as Thou art. Thou, the God who made me to my sinful heart. Jesus, I believe it on thy only word. Kneeling, I adore thee as my King and Lord. My Jesus, that Thou comes to me. I have sinned against Thee, often grievously. I am a very Come, oh, come, my Savior. 
Mighty Jesus, you have called us to come and follow you. It's called Isaiah, you call us to. Well, Isaiah is a servant to follow you. Let us hear your call for each and one of our hearts. Especially in this Holy Week, let us surrender to you, O oh God. Let your will be done in our lives. Not my will, but your will be done in each and one of our lives. The Lord, come. Open our hearts to you for our whole nation, our whole world. As we journey through this Holy Week, we truly surrender to you. Your will be done in each one of our lives. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, O Lord, that by the same sacrament with which you have fed us in this present age, we may make us partakers in the life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Mighty God bless you all. Name the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Continue having a holy week, every one of you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Just a little announcement. Father Mike is hearing confessions for the next hour in the conference room at the back. He could go through the children's room. Also tomorrow before Mass, the hour before Mass, he will also hear confession. Tomorrow, Wednesday, and also Wednesday evening at prayer meeting. Thursday, of course, no Mass at midday. Mass is in the afternoon everywhere on Thursday. And on Friday morning, we have our walk around the Savannah, our stations of the cross. People are welcome. We have at the doors a little leaflet that says the different times for this weekend. Please take one if you'd like as you go. God bless you and take care. Have a beautiful evening. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain We do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be this.